here how you balance it all. So you have a full-time job as a PA, and then you have your side business, and then you also want to have some time for having a life. So how do you navigate all this and balance it all while staying, you know, mentally grounded within the process? Hi everyone, thank you for joining today for our first episode in the Entrepreneurs in Healthcare series. I am so excited to be here with Kelsey Beaupre. She is an orthopedic surgery physician assistant. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kelsey. Yeah, thanks for having me, Priya. Excited to chat back and forth here. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you currently do? Sounds good. Yes, I live here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And as you shared, I'm a physician assistant in orthopedic surgery. So I've spent uh, my whole career so far in orthopedic surgery doing primarily reconstructive orthopedics. So doing total joint replacements, knee and hip replacements primarily with some other specialty surgeries. So I spend a couple days a week in the operating room and then a couple days a week in clinic. Kind of balances out my schedule and then I have some extra time outside of that to keep myself busy with a few other things and entrepreneurship like we'll talk about today. Just a few other things, right? (laughs) That's awesome. I love seeing what you're doing on the side. And before we jump into that, I'd love for you to tell us what inspired you to go into healthcare in the first place. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it makes me think back all the way to high school, I think, is where my first interest in healthcare started. Um, I've always been fascinated by the human body and like how it heals itself and how it all works. Um, so I was like that nerd in high school where I saved uh, anatomy and physiology to take my senior year. It was like a treat for making it to senior year. And I was like geeking out, so excited for it. Um, And it was amazing. I loved the whole class. And we had this really neat opportunity where we got to actually go and observe a surgery as a high school class, um, which was mind blowing to me and so exciting um, to all the Grace fans out there. Uh, That was definitely a little extra itch there um, to to see that surgery. But what was so cool is we were observing this surgery and then we got to ask questions along the way. And um, the person that was answering the questions was a physician assistant. And I had never heard of that career path before. And so I went home and I'm like Google searching it. Like, what the heck is a PA? And um, what does their jobs look like? And so I was thinking, well, maybe when I go to college, I'll think about doing that. And then I had my physical to get ready to go to school or you get all your vaccines and whatnot. And I saw my primary care provider that I'd seen my whole life growing up. And I realized that he was actually a physician assistant. We always called him Dr. Steve uh, because you tend to call PAs by their first name, but um, it turns out he was a physician assistant. And so I drilled him with questions and and loved hearing about his career path and how there's many different directions that you can go. Um, So that's what inspired me to pursue becoming a PA. So I started college. I was pre-PA in biology, and I ended up switching to kinesiology just because it was more human body focused and movement focused, which definitely was where my interest was over some of the other classes in biology. I love that. I feel like so many people have that unique role model early in their career that really inspires them to become that person who's a provider, who's caring for people. So I love that you had that as well. It's really helps you grow and aspire to be in those shoes. So that's Mm -hmm. awesome. And now we're going to talk a little bit about your entrepreneur journey. So I'd love for you to shift and tell us, you know, along your healthcare endeavors and your career as a physician assistant, how did you start dabbling into a side business and what kind of sparked that interest initially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not part of my whole life plan where I had, I think a lot of people in healthcare were like, we most people grew up wanting to do some kind of healthcare, and then they're like, I'm going to go to this school and we have to study hard and we're going to get into this program. And we kind of tend to be more type A and planners oftentimes. And uh, I was kind of out of left field for me to pursue entrepreneurship. It wasn't part of my like life plan. Um, but what happened is I got accepted to a phenomenal PA program, Marquette University, um, where I did all my, all my training. And is one of the top PA programs. So I was so energized to get accepted to it, but it's also a private school. So that came with a pretty hefty price tag as I think a lot of uh, medical professionals can probably relate to. It's not cheap, but it's a great path to take. 
And so that started to weigh a little bit. My husband and I got married right before PA school. And so thankfully we got to share on tackling all this debt, but, um, you know, we were just pretty energized to get rid of that as quickly as possible. Um, so that was one of the first things that stimulated our interest in at least wanting to diversify in some way. Um, and then beyond that, you know, I've loved my career path as a PA. I just reached this point that I'm like, I wanted a little more flexibility and I wanted to do um, some more things in healthcare kind of on my own terms and not hit that burnout level that a lot of us are kind of fearful of. Um, and in preparing for PA school, I did some medical mission work that I absolutely loved. And so I wanted a lot more time to do medical mission work. So I just knew I was going to need to have some other streams of income to be able to like take a six month sabbatical and go somewhere and, and volu do volunteer medicine. I needed some sort of income. And so what's interesting is I think a lot of entrepreneurs these days, they start a business out of like passion of like, I'm really good at X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to start a business around that. And for us, we actually looked at entrepreneurship as a vehicle to start creating income so that we could have more choice because ultimately we wanted to own our time, but we needed some kind of income to do that. And so, um, you know, our biggest mission was getting debt free. And so we started a couple of businesses in the e-commerce industry uh, out of some having great guidance from people along the way who had success in the, in the e-commerce industry. I've, we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> Honestly, to start, it's like, I've never taken a business class in my life. So I knew it was maybe going to be a bit of a rocky road to start. So finding some people who had created the results we wanted was really helpful. Um, and yeah, through starting those couple businesses, that's what allowed us to uh, pay off all my student loan debt pretty early on. It was about two and a half years after PA school. We cleared about $120,000 of student loan debt. Um, so yeah, that, that was a good feeling for sure. And definitely opened up my eyes and, and helped me even just enjoy my job more. Cause I wasn't doing it because I needed to pay the bills, um, was, was, was pretty cool. And then a few years ago, we started our educational company really as just a way to start paying forward what we learned in our journey. And we just meet a lot of young professionals these days who want to do more. Um, just aren't really sure what path to take. And so we now focus on providing guidance and really helping aspiring entrepreneurs on those early days of just taking the plunge into entrepreneurship and then also helping those early couple years of their journey not be quite so rocky. <laughs> That's amazing. I love what you guys are doing. I think, you know, it can be scary at first. Um, you know, what steps do you take? As you mentioned, you hadn't taken business classes. So it's like, how do I self-educate and um, learn all the things that I need to do to build the foundation for this when I have this vision. So um, I really think it's awesome what you've done to take the pearls that you've learned and kind of package them for people to be able to model over that and be able to build their own. So kind of passing on that knowledge moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you guys had started, what was the most challenging or scary for you? And how did you mentally overcome those barriers? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's like, can I list like 15 things? Because that's ultimately how I think most entrepreneurs feel. Um, and, you know, I think one of the scary things is there's never going to be like the perfect time, you know, in the heat of grad school and, you know, studying or in class 40 hours a week, studying 30 hours a week on top of that for PA school, we started to talk about an idea of running a business. And I'm like, either we're like totally insane or this might be a good idea, you know, and so that was definitely overwhelming for us of like, well, maybe we should wait, right? Maybe we should wait five years or 10 years. And we just reached this point where it's like, in 10 years, we're probably going to say, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. And um, so I think that was scary of just the actual action of starting a business and taking the plunge. Um, and it was very out, out of my comfort zone. I feel like becoming an entrepreneur was in a sense, like learning a new language, uh, just like in any medical program, it's like all these medical terminologies that we have to learn and we like speak medicine, you know, I had to start to do that same thing with entrepreneurship. So I dove in and I was like listening to podcasts, reading books and studying up. But I think what eased our mind the most was getting some really great guidance from some entrepreneurs in the area who had kind of like gone ahead and they had, had created success running a few different businesses and ultimately had the results that we wanted and had the flexibility and the lifestyle and kind of peace of mind and own their time. Um, so we 
admitted this was back in the day pre-COVID where we could like sit and grab coffee with people. And so it's like we grabbed as many cups of coffee as we could and picked their brain. And I think um, just like we, I had a mentor getting into PA school and through that journey, they were our mentors in our entrepreneurial journey, uh, which helped, yeah, make it a much smoother process. And we still failed a lot, um, but at least we had someone who understood why we were failing and could help us not fail quite so much, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's been any successful entrepreneur who hasn't failed and failed hard numerous times because that's the road to success. So that's great and comforting mm -hmm. <laughs> and really reassuring to hear that you had a similar process of navigating all this and really key mentors who helped you along the way. So after you kind of overcame that initial sense of just overwhelm, you know, how do I pursue this? How did you start taking the steps to build your client base and establish your services? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first thing was leaning into people who, again, had created the results that we wanted and said, well, and drilled them with questions. How have you done it? What have you done? What have you learned? What, you know, what things worked well? What things didn't work so well? Because um, that helped because we didn't have to like reinvent the wheel or start from scratch and just like try a thousand things and hope that one of them works. Um, so that helped definitely on our journey. But then beyond that, it was all about networking. Um, and networking is the name of the game, I think, when it comes to anything, you know, these days that I've heard quotes like now, you know, your, your network is the real estate of the 21st century. Having a really strong network, you know, is because that's what we own is the people that we're, we don't own the people, but it's like, that's what we, um, is a, a resource of ours and an asset of ours is the relationships that we have with people. Um, so what was neat is as I was networking to, you know, learn from other entrepreneurs and things like that and networking to establish some, you know, grow our company, establish some clients and things. I also ended up networking and getting the job that I have now as a PA. I didn't even apply for the job that I have today. Um, it was just through, you know, conversations and, and hitting it off with a couple people. And they're like, you know what, we might actually have a, a possible opportunity for you. And, and so it's, that's totally the power of networking. I guess that's all I really have to say is, um, you know, I guess one other point beyond that is part of networking is having your own personal brand. And, you know, personal brand is huge on LinkedIn or whatever networking platform. Nowadays, it's kind of more social networking, but um, eventually it'd be great for us to get back to in person and meeting people and like going to PA conferences and networking there and uh, all different kinds of things like that. It's how do you carry yourself and what do you want your personal brand to emulate and how can you best share um, this, the strengths and qualities and characteristics that you have and actually emulate those things. Cause I think sometimes we're too timid and we're not, we don't want to, you know, brag about who we are as people, but at the same time, that's part of our brand is, and it's important to actually express those things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cultivating that so that you can express what you stand for and people can kind of buy into that. And, you know, you take ownership of what you're representing and Really what you said about um, networking, like that is the, the immense value of that, right? Like it's almost priceless nowadays. And mm -hmm. it really also helps shape, you know, what you do with your brand because they help inspire, they help mold you and build you. I think they say like you're a culmination or addition of like the five closest people who you continue to network with. And so I think you've probably had really strong people within your network who have really helped guide you along the way and help build what you have had with your husband and your business. So that's awesome, Kelsey. I totally agree with you on the value of a professional network and tapping into that to be able to grow a business, especially from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So now that you've told us about your journey to start, once you got there to establishing the framework and the groundwork, how did you go about, you know, working with professionals to help them maximize their finances? Could you tell us more what you do in this area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the first step was maximizing our own finances and kind of learning from some of our own mistakes, uh, which I sometimes think it's like, gosh, that was a lot of debt to pile on, but I look back on it now and I'm actually grateful for it, which seems kind of weird, but we learned so much in actually managing our own finances and paying off debt and then now being able to help other people just be smarter, I guess, when it comes to their finances. And so uh, we look, a lot of our educational company now is focused on 
helping young professionals who want to get into entrepreneurship make that plunge. But then I, uh, you don't just want to jump in and let your finances go amok. You know, it's important to manage that really well. Otherwise you could find yourself moving in the wrong direction rather than trying to uh, really maximize your finances. And so I think the, the number one tip that we have for people that I hope is common sense is budgeting. Um, but what we often see is people like have a, there's a difference between having a budget and honoring a budget and actually making decisions based off of your budget um, and following it and checking in, you know, maybe at least on a monthly basis. Hey, where did I go over budget? Where did I go under budget? Um, or just like, hey, maybe you're just looking to maintain uh, and not go in either direction. You don't have a ton of debt or finances are already really great. Um, it's important to at least know where your money is going because uh, there's going to be this cash flow amount that's like the difference between your expenses and your income. So it's like what's left basically. And that's where I see people make some sometimes uh, not great decisions, right? Because they're like, I got all this extra money. I can do whatever the heck I want with it, um, which is true, but they could also really work to maximize that cash flow piece. So whether that means uh, it's, it's important for them just to prioritize and we'll work with people on this. Like, what are their financial priorities? Is it they just need to pad the savings more so that, you know, when their tires go out on their car, it's not swiping the credit card to buy new tires, you know. So maybe it's padding the savings. Maybe it's paying off debt a little more aggressively. Maybe it's getting into investments. Um, for us, it was like all hands on deck to pay off debt was a huge focus of ours. So that's one big thing is uh, just maximizing the current cash flow. Uh, and then we, we talk with people and help them on when it does come to diversifying, what makes sense? You know, we started our first couple of businesses debt free, um, which was important because there's so many different directions people can go with an entrepreneurship these days, or even just like the side hustle realm. It's like, are diversifying, you know, real estate is a, is a common path, just getting into investments more or starting an Etsy shop, drop shipping. There's like a thousand things that you can do these days, which is a beautiful thing about the 21st century is you can do a lot of things. Um, but it's important to align whatever that path is with what your financial goals are um, so that it's not getting into a ton more debt, or at least for us, we weren't wanting to tackle on a bunch more debt before we at least got to neutral. Um, and, you know, start a, a brick and mortar business or something like that didn't make sense for us. And so, yeah, we help people kind of pair what's the financial goals that you have with how could you um, really improve your finances through diversifying or maybe starting some side hustles and things like that. So I think that's really important. And then uh, one thing that I see very commonly in the healthcare field, once people finish school, and maybe you've ex experienced this with some of your peers, but I think anyone who ends up getting a, a decent paying job, whether it's in healthcare or not, is lifestyle inflation. <laughs> you go from like eating ramen all through, you know, grad school or, you know, med school or whatever program. Um, and you're like on this super tight budget. And then you get your first paycheck and you're like, I'm balling. I can do whatever the heck I want. Like, let's go to all the nice restaurants, time to buy a new car. Now I can get out of this grungy apartment and I'm going to buy a house. And it's just like money is just flowing out the door. And, uh, and then with each promotion, it's like, sweet, I got a promotion or I made some more money or I got a bonus at the end of the year. Let's just blow it. Right. <laughs> and so um, my husband and I are very commonly talk, very often talking about lifestyle inflation. And that was a huge thing for us because we were so used to, you know, for the three years of PA school, living very humbly on his first, you know, job income out of school. So he wasn't making a ton of money and we had to support ourselves. And so we lived very humbly during that time. And then we just maintained that. Yeah, maybe there was a little bit of, you know, we maybe bought more of like fresh groceries than we could afford during PA school and stuff like that. I went out to eat and whatever here and there. But we tried to maintain that a lot. So then for us, we just threw all that extra money that a lot of my income early on towards student loan debt, because that was our, that was our vision. And so, but that was us, right? Not again, not everyone has student loan debt, but there has to be some kind of goal around your finances. Otherwise, uh, if you don't plan for your money, it just goes bye-bye. It's like, it's not going to be there. You got to uh, plan for it and you can really maximize it that way. So that's some of our key things that we see people either make some mistakes on or just not have a lot of clarity. Sure. 
Yeah, having benchmarks to hold you accountable is so key, right? Otherwise, you can go off the beaten path and pretty soon you're bankrupt. So <laughs> yes. it's great that you're providing these resources. You guys have gained such an um, immense catalog of resources and knowledge of ways to be more conscientious with your finances and really passing that along to the new generation who are coming out, really experienced professionals who have put a lot of time and energy into their studies to be able to provide for patients, but maybe a little bit of help in that area of ma managing their own time and money. So that's awesome that you're doing that. And in hearing you talk about this, I'm thinking, you know, you talked about this earlier too, you alluded to helping people find their why when they're building their own business. So what is your why in all of this? What inspires you to keep doing this every day and providing these services for people? What do you most enjoy about all of it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to enjoy it, right? To keep, you know, hustling or keep grinding. And um, I mentioned earlier, you know, with our first businesses in the e-commerce industry, it actually wasn't something we were passionate about. Entrepreneurship was more of just a vehicle for us at that time to, to create some income. But the, the biggest thing that keeps us going now is the opportunities that we've had to mentor other people. Um, and because, you know, through PA school or just through traditional education, there's a lot of things that we don't learn, whether it's you know, just organization and time management and, you know, what to do with our finances and just like all those different things that are so important that we need like a life 101 as you're like heading out of high school and you need it through college. And there's just so many topics that I think don't get hit on. And um, so we love to just get in there and have some challenging conversations with people um, because we see just amazing results that come from it. Actually, today I got a text from someone who I've worked, a woman who I've worked very closely with. She actually works in healthcare too. She's an x-ray tech and started running some businesses outside of that. And she texts me today and she works at an orthopedic hospital and the CEO came to her today and called her into their office. And so she's sitting in the CEO's office and, and uh, was explained to her that he is, you know, experienced her brand, her personal brand at work, and actually talked about that and how she relates to other people and said, I see potential in you and working your way up to the C-suite. Ah. There's like so much potential in you. And she just sent me kind of a, a gratitude message for really challenging her and helping her grow in her executive presence and how she carries herself and um, stepping up or, you know, stepping up, speaking out, things like that more. Um, you know, we've She's also had a ton of debt, right? So we've helped her in that path too. But it was just like those texts that I get or, you know, conversations that I have with people's family that says, gosh, we've seen so much growth in them because we help coach people on personal growth, personal development. And what's neat is it, it overflows, not just in entrepreneurship, it overflows into their careers and into their family life and their relationships. Um, so that was a, a fun thing that happened today that made my heart happy. And I just like, and those things definitely encourage me to keep pouring into other people. That's awesome to hear of your motivations. And I think really just what you've done to help people finesse their brand and the people that you work with, they're, they're showing up, right? Like they want to tackle the world and achieve great things and be doing extraordinary accomplishments to contribute to healthcare. But how do we like finesse that plan, right? So that we can make this sustainable and make, you know, us attractive from different aspects, not just from healthcare, but really have a holistic life. So it's all about the package and you guys do a really nice job of helping people get on that path. Thank um, you. In that vein, so knowing that you have your own full-time job, you also have your own side business and you also wanna have some time for life as well. How do you manage all of this and balance your time so that it is sustainable for you as well as a coach? Mm -hmm. That is what we're all on the hunt for, right? Is finding the perfect balance. Or I think even in, as people search for new jobs or whatever, it's like, I want the perfect work-life balance. And uh, my husband and I are recently talking about this because he's uh, putting together an article to publish on, on finding balance. And really what we feel like it ultimately comes down to is people feel they're living a balanced life if they're actually living out their values. And what's interesting is I think a lot of people haven't put like pen to paper and actually solidified and figured out what their values are. 
And so for us, I think that's why we can live such a, a dynamic kind of eventful life is there's always things that we could be doing is because we've worked over years to actually live out our values. So for us, it's, you know, our faith and then our family and our careers, then our businesses and our health. And like, that's kind of it. Like those are the, the top values for us so that when an opportunity comes onto our plate, we think about it's like, if our answer isn't like, heck yes, I for sure want to do that, then it's got to be heck no for us that we're like, you know what, that just maybe, I think people really struggle to say no uh, to things that they don't actually want to do, whether it's even an opportunity at work and you're like, that's actually not the direction I want to take my career, but we just feel bad saying no. So we say yes. And then now your whole career goes in a new direction or it's something as simple as, you know, you had plans to whatever, some certain plans that you had put on your calendar and then someone guilts you into attending some event for their cousin's neighbor, right? Or whatever that you just feel bad saying no. And so that's something we've worked so hard is um, to define what our values are and then actually live them out and be willing to say no to the things that don't align with what we want to be doing with our time. Um, so that's been really important. And then when it comes to actually living out our values, when we're doing those specific activities, we kind of work to comp compartmentalize our lives. So when I'm at work and I'm like sitting across, you know, talking to a patient, I'm there and I try my, my darndest to be present with my patient. Because that's what they need. They, a lot of my patients, they just want someone to listen to them, you know, especially in this world that we're living in today. That's just like maybe the only human interaction they've had in months, right? And so I just need to be present when I'm there. When I'm in the operating room, for sure, I need to be present, right, to, to, to give the best care to my patients. And then when I'm working on my health and it's like I'm at the gym or I'm working out, it's like notifications off. I'm focused on my own, my own care at that point. And same thing when I'm with family, I, I try my best to, you know, again, I think notifications is what pulls us a lot from being present. And so we, you know, try to plan accordingly, get as much stuff taken care of ahead of time so that when we're with family, we're just actually with family. Um, and even some things that my husband and I do to really get the most out of time with family is we'll even think ahead of time of what are some things that we want to talk to our family about, because it will help stimulate some really quality conversation and quality memories um, that helps us feel really fulfilled. Because if we, if that section of our values is, is really struggling or in any of our values, right, are really struggling, then it's hard to give anything our best. Um, and you can't give everything your best all the time. So that's where compartmentalizing, I think, is really important. I love and that. And then one last thing, yeah, one last thing that comes to mind is rest. And, um, you know, being a type A person, I just have to schedule it in. <laughs> as like silly as that might sound, it's, it might not happen because there is always more things that we could be doing. Um, but I can hustle hard through the week or I can hustle hard at certain times if I know that I have a break or a date night or whatever, a, a, some time with family planned and um, can just rest and, and recoup at that time, which is so important for anyone, I think, to, to focus on rest. Absolutely. It ebbs and flows, right? There are times when we really need to focus on one bucket of our lives more, but as long as we come to a balance in a reasonable amount of time so that we don't get out of balance, I think there's a quote by Albert Einstein, like, um, keeping going as slow as you go, like, as long as you keep going, that's your way of keeping balance, right? So just stay focused on, and like you were talking about, that laser focus on your core tenets in life, like, keep that at the forefront. Make sure you're hitting those buckets in a reasonable amount of time so that you feel like you're pouring your cup up full so that it's not getting empty for anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And I know you've learned a lot through your experiences, you know, trial and error, failure successes, building these businesses of your own. What has been maybe one or two of the most valuable learning experiences that you've had along the journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even coming back to just the topic we were just sharing on of balance is time management. Um, I shared about like I schedule and rest. I also schedule my workouts for a whole month in a, ahead of time because I know that they won't happen if I don't uh, put it in the calendar and prioritize it. So um, I think time management has been really key. So 
I always, I often challenge people, does your calendar actually represent the things that you value, right? Or does someone else control your calendar? You know, your best friend who wants you to do all these different things, do they, do they control your calendar? Or you'll probably feel really great if you're the one who is the deciding factor of your calendar. So that's been huge for me because yeah, anytime you add something new on your plate, it's going to be completely overwhelming and exhausting at first. And we have to grow our capacity in anything. Um, but that's probably been the, the biggest thing for me that's helped me just like live my life <laughs> and to like feel good about it is, is I'm, I've put my time where I want it to be. So I think that's really important. And then the other thing that's really stretched me is leadership. Um, that's been neat to see it, me focusing on leadership overflow into other areas of my life, not just in entrepreneurship, but I've studied books. I've studied podcasts. I mean, I have so many books on my bookshelf from John Maxwell because he's like the king of leadership. Um, and they're all underlined and highlighted. And I go back and I reference them when I'm in a certain situation or when I know I've been kind of slacking on my leadership, because uh, that stretches me so much. When mentoring someone, I can't just be like a mentorship to me is not just a cheerleader, right? And it's like, great job. You're doing so awesome. Keep it up, right? It's to me, mentorship is having the crucial conversations and the, hey, we talked, you talked about this being a priority of yours. And now, these things have happened, right? Tell me more about that. And uh, so it's forced me to be a better leader, which is also one of the things that I'm most proud of because uh, it's really gotten me out of my comfort zone. And I think the things that we're most proud of are the things that took some time and took some effort, uh, but eventually we saw some results and, and that would be leadership for me. I love that, Kelsey. I think you have a very systematic academic approach to all of this, which I think really helps you stand out, right? Because I think nowadays everyone's trying to be a coach, right? But what does that really mean? Like, it's like you said, it's not a cheerleader. It's really being able to pinpoint what someone's barriers are and provide really resourceful tools to be able to navigate that and tailor that to the individual person. It's not a generalizable thing. You have to really be able to understand someone's true challenges and provide that support to them to, to help them get to that next level. So that's awesome. And to what you said earlier too, about being, having this be a part of like education, like, you know, life 101, why isn't this part of our training? You know, as healthcare professionals, we go through extensive years of academic um, training and um, clinical skills and clerkships and rotations, but a lot of these really core principles of how we manage our time and our lives and our money and our relationships, that's just on, on our own. And we're usually limited so much with time and resources to be able to figure those out early on in our careers. So having people like you and your husband who really help people who may feel like untethered coming out of whatever healthcare professional education that they've had is really, really helpful. And I hope more people start to use you guys as resources to be able to elevate their lives and um, get to that next step. So, so in closing, if you had, you know, one or two big pieces of advice for someone who may be watching, who's thinking about starting their own business, probably having the same fears that you had initially, not knowing what to do, where to start, what would you advise them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, my biggest advice for people is kind of a, a three-step approach. It's like, you got to figure out how you want to live. What's kind of the lifestyle that you're working towards or what's your goal when it comes to running a business? Uh, Cause for some people, the goal is just to make a couple hundred bucks and that can cover some of their student loans or that covers something in their life. They just want to make a certain amount of money. Well then that help that will direct what path you take when it comes to entrepreneurship. Um, for us, again, it was much greater than that. And we wanted the opportunity to uh, eventually uh, obviously pay off debt. And then now we're at the point that we've replaced my income as a PA. So I don't have to continue working full time. I can now work out of choice and desire and have more time for, for medical mission work and things. So um, I, my biggest question for people is why do they want to be an entrepreneur? And um, once they have that clear path, then it's a matter of looking at what avenues can you take to actually get the result that you want? 
Um, and beyond that, then I think to simplify it for us the most, the, the best way that we, the best approach that we took was then finding someone who had the results that we wanted. Um, so I think the big thing in pursuing entrepreneurship, one, you just got to take the plunge. You got to do it, but you have to have a plan first and make sure that your plan is your plan. Not you read some blog post, you watch some YouTube video, you read some book that says you should do this. Well, uh, that might be a great option for somebody, but it might not yield the result that you want. And so I really encourage people to take a path that will yield the type of income or whether it's automating their income or whatever it is, um, be selective on the path that they take. And then you got to commit uh, because when it comes to entrepreneurship, the results do not come as fast as you want them to. I, I always attribute it to like the same thing with going through PA school. It's like it was going to be a grind for, you know, two to three years of my life. But then I would get the result that I wanted at the end. And that's the same thing with entrepreneurship. There's got to be some commitment. But you want to just make sure you're committing to something that will get you the results that you ultimately want. Absolutely. Persistence is key, right? And as bringing it full circle back to what we talked about at the beginning, like you're going to see failures, probably a lot of them at the beginning. And it's, it can be demoralizing. It can be discouraging, but keeping that vision at the forefront. Um, I know some people like using vision boards and that helps put everything physically in front of their face every day. Like this is a lifestyle that I want to achieve. This is where I'm going. And I don't want to lose sight of that. So um, having someone like you who can help with the resources and tools to remember that and figure out ways to get to that is awesome. So thank you so much, Kelsey. Did you have any final last closing thoughts you'd like to share or um, advice on how people can reach out to you or get a hold of you? Yeah, for sure. Um, one point on your vision board, I also encourage people to put their values on it. We actually have one in our, in our office here because um, your vision should align with your values as well. And so that's important to um, solidify those for sure. But yeah, I'm happy to, to chat with anyone. Um, I often do just kind of like informational interviews, even just on the PA path, because I remember wanting more people that I could connect with. I didn't have anyone in healthcare in my whole extended family. Um, so I felt like I didn't have as many great resources back then. And so I'm, I'm always open to hopping on phone calls and uh, probably the best way for people to get a hold of me in the PA path or entrepreneurial path if you're um, watching and you're wanting to start making some moves outside of your career, um, I would be more than happy to have a conversation. So LinkedIn would probably be the best path to get me to shoot me a message on there, a connection request or an email, I guess. I think my email address is probably on there too, but LinkedIn is definitely the best way to get a hold of me and I'd be more than happy to chat. Thanks so much, Kelsey. I really appreciate your time. I love this chat. I learned a lot of great nuggets about how to manage my own finances and time. So um, super educational. Um, thank you so much again for your time and spending your resources and advice with us. And thank you all for joining in for our first episode of the Entrepreneurs in Healthcare series. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you.